All right, so I've been working on the next how-to video in the process, so I figured why not go live with it so you guys can join and watch and interact. So, Bird's Eye Maple. If all goes well, this will be our finished look. It's an older model, it's a little, little dirty, but you get the, the idea, all right? So what it is, is here's, oops, had something on my hand. Base coat of the surface using Benjamin Moore Regal. It's Benjamin Moore's Regal line. Eggshell enamel. We want the eggshell because it's got the right texture to work over, the right slickness, sheen level. Flat is too porous. It soaks the glaze in, causing it not to move around how we want it to move around. Semi gloss is too slick and it makes the glaze slide all across the surface, surface making it harder for us to do what we need to do. Actually can help remove the glaze and not give us the desired effect. So that's our paint. The glaze I'm gonna be using is uh, Modern Masters Tintable Glaze, water base, into your only tints with pigment, never paint. Paint will be uh, two things, makes it too opaque. So we're not gonna get the depth that we're looking for in the, finish, in the final product. It also accelerates the dry time, so this won't dry. It won't give us the open or working time that we're looking for when we do the process. Okay, so I've tinted it with simple, um, I use, uh, what are they? No, I don't have any other things around. Proline tints. Um, it's a great brand, very uh, reasonably priced and very effective. Uh, but again, those tints are only for interior use. So if I was doing an exterior, I'd have a completely different, a completely different process. But I've tinted it to this, see that color there? There it is. It's like a Hershey's chocolate bar, All right? And what I'm going to do is take, sorry, I'm looking at my panel. I haven't painted this in a while. Uh, Purdy Peacock. This Purdy is the brand. Peacock is the model. It's a black nylon bristle brush. Uh, black nylon seems to be the softest out there. It doesn't leave as many brush marks on the surface. Now, Take and just coat the surface with it. I did dilute the glaze down about 10% or so. It was a little thick, which is no big deal. So we're gonna put it on, obviously. And we're gonna stretch this out a little bit. All right, now we're gonna come back side to side to side. What we're doing is evening out all that glaze. And then finishing top to bottom. And always tip it off the same direction. Try to keep it as straight as possible. So if you can hear me, my back's turned to the uh, camera. All right, where are we at? This guy. Have a natural sea sponge roller. It's a little dirty because I was using it earlier. So I'm just gonna give it a quick rinse. You want to hydrate this guy before you put it in the serve. Is it a glaze? Because it's too dry, it'll pull a lot of glaze off in one area. As it becomes saturated and you move through the panel panel, it will then be removing little glaze. So saturate it, wring it out. I want to leave the water on there because uh, piece of lint. Now, just roll. I'm actually going to just kind of go through it like this. So, with the water on it, it helps pull off the glaze. So, it's a negative technique. You got to be careful. See, this is a very distinct pattern. We're trying to avoid that. So I'm going to just simply go like this. What I'm doing is I'm tapping it into it to help wipe it away. Now I'm going to come down here and start this one. Same thing. I'm going to flip it. That way I don't have to worry about that distinct pattern being created.
There we go. Let's change this up a little bit. And you always got to work, if I'm you know, on a door panel or a cabinet panel, I'd be working off of the surface. So, you know, it's tricky to do against certain surfaces, but you're going to take some of these, you're going to cut them smaller sizes, or even use a real sea sponge to do what you got to do. Put that in the bucket of water. Now we're going to grab our badger brush. Triple row silver tip. Triple row simply because there's three rows of badger hair. Silver tip because it's a more mature hair, so it's softer. Uh, the short ones, are stiff. They're going to leave scratch marks. Downside, this is not a cheap brush. Uh, this little guy here is probably about $85. It's been a while since I picked it up. Is there any particular tribute to looking when you're choosing a natural sea sponge? Yes, when you're looking for a natural sea sponge, there, gosh, there's so many different ones out there, and I'll put a, a link to them. Um, some are very hard. Um, you don't want those, and they're expensive. The good ones are expensive. I want to say the last one I just had is probably about eight inches, and she was 30 bucks. So, like you stuff, you're going to see it. Depot, Lowe's, the paint stores, they're not good ones. I hate to be that way. Um, all right, back to this. Badger brush. Uh, you want to take good care of these, clean them up. I've had this brush probably going on 15 years. I mean, it lasts so long because it's not used like a paintbrush. It's softening. So what I'm going to do right now is come in here, and it's a light touch. I'm straight in, not on an angle. If you go on an angle, you're going to leave scratch marks. Straight in, act like you're going to tickle the surface. If you get a hair in here from the brush like I just did, just pluck it right out. It's not a big deal. All right? So light, light touch. You can't even hear my brush on this surface, and that's what we're going for. It's, there's, here, listen. It's that plastic, and you can hear it, but on here, it's just because of the nature of the beast. Light. And we're going sideways at first. Side to side. See how I'm blending in? Look at the difference. This is all background. See how soft and cloudy? Harsh and stark, all right? I got this brush comes from uh, the AS Handover Company in the UK. I'll put links to their products. The downside is that because of the recession, oops, you have too much pressure. That happened a few years ago. They don't, they don't have a huge inventory. They stock them a few and then they'll, they'll run out and then they have to order or make more for you. And unfortunately what's going on right now is probably gonna be a lot harder to get some of these specialty tools. But if you, in a pinch, you can actually do this with just kind of breaking up some of these brush marks from my glaze. So I'm gonna stipple it out. So it's also breaking up the brush marks and I'm doing it after the fact because it's gonna add some different dimension to the background so these don't look as artificial or painted as the idea. I'm using a little bit more pressure right now to so get rid of some of those brush strokes. And you see I'm going different directions. Okay, now, the next tool that we're gonna be working with is simply a pencil. And what I did is I took the eraser, can you see that? And I've drilled a hole in the dead center of the eraser. So when we do our bird's eye eyes, it's gonna go into the glaze, straight in. I'm gonna turn it, catching this glaze, creating my bird's eye. So they stuck in the middle and I get those little bullseyes.
or bird's eyes. Let's see. see what I'm talking about. The downside. This is going to take a while. So I'm holding it flat to the surface and twisting. Flat to the surface and twisting. And when I do it, I'll actually turn it, sometimes change it, because if I keep going the same pattern, it could take on that look, and I don't want that. So yeah, you're talking a little bit of a process here. They do make brushes for this, um, but that's like 50 bucks, and this does the exact same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'll just do half of it so you get the idea. And I can do a small cluster so if I want. It's just to study the real thing. Just download photos. I actually have this in my kitchen. It's kind of cool. On the end panels, it's real bird's eye. It's got a real pretty look to it. I'd say that's about halfway. Put a couple more right here. Now, clean this off. I don't know where my brush went. I just had it. Hmm, hmm, hmm. It's not this one. I need to clean this workstation up. Give me a second. Oh, I lost it. That's not good. Somebody asked about a sea sponge. This is a cheap one from uh, the paint store. It's just hard. The openings are real small and tiny. Just needs to be in a trash can. Looking for... Slotted fan brush, or my slotted, yeah. Slotted spalter is what I'm looking for. I haven't seen it for a minute. I don't know what happened to it. Bummer. Well, we can do it with this. Just pipe over greener. Where did I get this guy from? Grumbacher. Cool little brush. So I'll make sure that I put that down there in the bottom. Uh, okay, rubbing alcohol. Good old fashioned rubbing alcohol. I could do this with water, but I prefer the alcohol. And what I'm going to do is saturate this guy, dampen this brush with some alcohol. I just need something to pour it onto. Really prefer my other brush, but it is what it is. How do I open this thing? Take it, put it in the alcohol, shake the excess off. We don't want that drip. Okay. Now I'm going to take a comb, just a regular old hair comb, nothing fancy, and pull it through here. And what that does is it pulls these together nice and tight. It also opens up, so there's a couple bristles that are stuck together there. Now it's clean. So it's nice and tight together. Got a real fun look. I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. This might be too, too big for what I wanna do. You know what? It is. Forget all that, sorry. Some of the fun ones. Have you seen guys like that before? 
These are, this is for a totally different type of wood graining. But for this, I'm gonna use, there we go. My pencil liner. I'm gonna take it through this comb just because it's been sitting for a minute. And the bristles sometimes get stuck together. Just get it nice, big, and fluffy. Perfect. Now I'm gonna put that in my alcohol. I could use the pipe over grainer. I'd rather have one with three pipes, not seven. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's just too wide. So when I do my part in the center, it would be too hard. See that? I'm gonna start in the middle. And it's not gonna be completely finished because I didn't knock all this out. I probably should, but no big deal. And then uh, I'm just gonna come in here. I have my reference. I need to put a couple on now. Like so, let's just start at the heart. Add your brush. So now, center out. Pull it. Pull this down. And pull the side up. Just out. All right. Watch. See how it reactivated that? And it's 91% alcohol, so it's going to evaporate off my brush real quick. So now I do my next pass to center. These parts are close together. And then it steps out. And again, soften. Down to the half. This side goes down, this side goes up. And we continue on. We're going to put the heart in place first. And then I'll use the pipe over grainer on the outsides. It's gonna look rather cartoony for a while because we have to let all this dry and come back into the overglaze to tone it all down. Oops, lost my part. Old here. I didn't put any up there. That's done. Now we can go to the pipe over grainer, load it with the alcohol, rubbing alcohol, again, 91%. We use a high percentage because if it's too lower, if it's lower, it's more like a syrup and it hangs on the surface and it can cause drips. Now, just gonna come through here, like so. So now, as this was growing, this side of the tree, if part of the uh, part of the bark tree grain, the little sap would be growing out. And we just pull it out and we open it up. There we go. So make sure that when you put them in, they're running the same way meaning you don't want them to crisscross. See, I didn't lose any of my bird's eyes. Not at all. No, no. Bring this one down. Like 
so I'm going to let it come in just a little. Whoops. This side you'll soften out. The light touch is going out. That way it happens is as the sap's coming through it or pushing its way through that wood grain, it looks slightly diffused, and then we come back and go top to bottom. That's much better. Yeah, I could have gotten away with this. So every time I load it, I should be pulling it through the cone, keeping its shape. There. That's that part of the process. I know it looks a little crazy at the moment, but when we do a toning layer in a little while, it will uh, start to come together. Right now, everything's just very pronounced. So look at the difference between the coloring. Without an overglaze, with an overglaze. So that's what we're, and it has to be 100% dry. So I can come back and Finish these guys. For those that just popped in, this is a uh, pencil, obviously. I took a drill and drilled out the center of it. And that's what gives us these little nuts. So I'm putting in, pressing it, whoops, pressing and turning, pressing and turning, and it catches that glaze and leaves it caught in the center. And I, I, if I lost any of these, I can just come back and bring them right back. Not a big deal. Actually, you'll see this turning right to left, left to right. But you got to keep a steady pressure on. Okay, that's pretty much it for that part of the process. It has to dry. So we can talk about something or I can demonstrate something else while it's drying because it'll put it in a drying room and uh, force dry it. What do I have there laying around we can play with with wood? Some of you might recognize that one. Flame crotch figure from the other day. There's the uh, coral from the other day. <laughs> okay, go on. Should have prepped another board out. Okay, but that's pretty much it for this part of the process. So you're going to have to dry down, and uh, I'll, I'll simply come back and take my glaze, which, again, was 
The Modern Masters, tintable glaze, water-based, cleans up soap and water, tints with pigment, never paint. Paint makes it opaque. Pigment paint also accelerates to dry time. Tinted it to a Hershey's chocolate bar color. And once this is dry, I'll take the paintbrush that I always use, the pretty peacock, and I'll just brush it on top to bottom. I'll stretch it out side to side, and I'll finish by top to bottom and then tip it off top to bottom. Tipping off just simply means straight down. Then I'll take my badger brush. I'll stipple that out a little bit to break up any brush marks, and then I will soften it all away. And that's what we get. Okay. Um, if you don't mind, real quick, go down here and hit that subscribe button. That way you'll be notified when I go live or make a new video. And I'm experimenting with this whole live process. I'm getting, becoming very familiar with it. So thank you for your patience as I navigate my way through it. Um, but I do make a lot of videos. I'm starting to make even more. Um, but yeah, hit that subscribe button. I know that way you're notified. If you don't mind, hit the like button. Um, so I know you're there. If you have questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. Once this is done, I'll go back and add in um, a link, links to all the tools and materials. That way you can, you know, do what you wanna do. Oh, thanks, D. Was it J? J. Yep, JD, thanks. Okay, but that's it. And if you have any questions about classes, I do have an updated schedule at the website, thefoeschool.com. Um, and I'm available for commission projects, you know, you name it, houses. I've done, always do houses, restaurants. I've done casinos. Um, yeah, I've done some pretty cool stuff, and it's all on the website. I know once in a while I get a, a snarky little comment that oh, he only works on sample boards. To give you an idea, I've done a, was that a 10,000 square foot casino ceiling down, uh, down in Alabama with clouds. I've, uh, all the pictures are on the site. Let's see, some of the biggest columns I've wood grained were 30 feet tall. Um, what else? If you're in, if, oh, I'll tell you right now, if you've ever seen the Kennedy Center, I was the first person in history of the Kennedy Center to paint all the exterior surfaces to match the marble. Any chance of you getting into Houston for mini classes? Absolutely. I, you know, pretty much everything I need can fit right here to teach a class or in a suitcase I'm teaching plasters. Um, yeah, I'd love to come down. I, it's fun. But um, actually, you know what? I'm just really cool since, because today's a slow day. Even everybody knows what's going on out there. So let's try to get distracted. Um, years ago, an elder, an older gentleman came in, actually kept calling me, wanting if I wanted brushes. I thought he was a brush salesman. I was like, no, I don't need brushes. I have brushes. He was very persistent. Back then, my sister Megan ran the office. Um, now she's stay at home, mom. Um, and she's like, hey, uh, this guy called and he's gonna bring a bunch of brushes in. I was like, he, I don't need to buy brushes. I've got tons of brushes. He's like, no, he's giving you brushes. Well, what do you mean he's giving me brushes? And uh, let me turn around here. Ugh. Come on, chair. He was a retired painter, never had children carry on the craft. Um, he learned in from his father who learned in Germany. His father got his master papers in 1922 and gave me his father's, hold on, sorry, um, I had a battery notification. Uh, gave me his father's brushes, stencils, books. And when I was in um, Amsterdam, Is it Amsterdam? A town called, outside of Amsterdam, a town called Utrecht. Um, and it was a painting show. Uh, I don't want to say show, more like a gathering. It's called Salon. Um, it's a really unique group of talented people that come together once a year in various parts of the world. And um, I had pictures of all these things. Nobody had seen anything like them. Even at this painting, the technical school at Nemento, they have a museum of brushes and tools and everything, and no one has ever seen any of these tools. So I'll let this roll. And if you give me a minute or two, I'm going to dig these things out and I'll show them to you because they're super, super cool. Um, sit tight, drink some coffee or some tea and give me one second. And I'm sorry for the dead screen time. Give me one second.
trying to get to the shelves where I keep them. Oh, yes. Absolutely. All right, I tend to geek out on some of this stuff. Actually, tell you what, because of the way YouTube's algorithms work, I don't wanna confuse these two things. I'm gonna stop this video, and in a minute, I'm gonna come right back and start another video about this. So, thanks for watching this. One minute, I'm gonna go get some cold water and we're gonna have some fun. How do I stop you?